Hockey Nation fans, welcome back to the Hockey Nation live show with Cole Frenchy directly from the boot and Michael DeVillano directly from the West Coast and USA, California. Michael, how are you doing today for a Monday? Excited to be starting to look at the future of the NHL. <laughs> As we get back to playing hockey, would be great. <laughs> yeah, we, um, you know, it was a great weekend. Uh, we are a little bit late this morning because we tried to uh, to talk about each day, about the each team, the, you know, the roster, the depth chart, the rookies, the prospect, everything like that. So we're going to go through the next, honestly, 31 days to go all the way. We're going to go not by who we're thinking, you are the best team, or we have no uh, other direction like alpha, uh, by the letters, and we start today, we're going to be the Hanheim Ducks. But before we jump on that, uh, we have a couple of news going on around the league. Since the last show we did Saturday, uh, not many things going on. Honestly, we're still waiting for what's going on with Mike Hoffman, uh, Travis Armonic. Honestly, they are maybe, and Michael uh, Greenland, they are the three players on the UFA. But this week is the, is the beginning of the RFA uh, arbitra uh, arbitration. Um, so they are going to be in front of, you know, to go on to see their salary uh, from the agent versus the, the the team, what they are thinking the players should get. So sometimes it's not great. They still have a couple of, like, you know, backflash from that discussion. If you turn that, hopefully everybody will be fine. So uh, what happening this weekend, uh, some we, we left each other we got a couple of new um, signature. We knew already, um, you know, Cody Sissick and also uh, Joey Dakar signed with the, you know, one with Pittsburgh and the one with Ottawa. But we have uh, three new players sign up. One is again for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Sam Militic uh, is only uh, 23 years old, left wing, one year contract, $700,000. But uh, the big one is honestly from the Boston Bros. The left defenseman, uh, Matt Grinslick, uh, 14 million point 75 uh, uh, for a long of a uh, length of the four years, 3.69 million per year. Uh, he is a 26 years old defenseman. Honestly, he's going to take what Tory Crook left this team, and we don't know again what Zeno Chara is going to do. So he's going to be maybe the right now the, the the best player on the left defenseman for boston so the the hole is big for him he have a lot of big shoes to you know to wear in now because without crook it may be possible shara um it's a big it's a big situation for matt honestly you have a lot of lot of things to do i mean uh, he's not a number one guy i can see where he's a three four maybe but Oh, yeah, definitely not number one. Of course, yeah. he's not, I don't but, know what, but I think they're counting on McAvoy to be their top guy, and he's got experience now, and he's got all the talent, and he's got way more offense than he's showing. So I think they'll be okay. I mean, but he played on the right right D. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So, but I yeah. think in the end, it's like you know, what's your one A, what's your two A, and so usually you know, McAvoy played with Shara a couple of years ago. Uh, for many years now because Shara, you know, they put Tory Crook with McEn McEnvoy. And it feels like a hole. So How good is Jeremy Lozon? I don't even know. I mean, So they have something to cover there for sure. They, are, um, they have a lot of money on the cap space to pick up someone maybe on the left side. But if you go on the UFA, they don't have a lot of, no. a lot of defensemen to cover that one over there. So it would be a very interesting what's going on. Uh, honestly, it's 5'9", 135. Um, you know, four goal last season, 17 assists and 21 points. Grizzlick, yeah, that's crazy. He's not very so, big. So he was the most, um, honestly, a goal for him and best season as an offensive site. So, um, um, you know, they need him for sure. Maybe not like top defenseman, but, you know, he can be like a top four. Uh, it's gonna have to be. I mean, he's making you know, three points. So um, the next thing that is happening a couple of minutes ago, maybe one hour ago, uh, it's a minor one. Uh, Ottawa Senator just signed GC Baudin, uh, 700,000 one year. Uh, he's a center, play for uh, AHL, 23 years old. Um, honestly, just like, you know, 
uh, we're going to get a lot of signature left and right from those kind of players on it for the next couple of uh, it's weird because I mean are they counting on an AHL season they're signing all these depth guys yeah he played 22 game last season with the uh, in the NHL you have only one assist minus four uh you know he's only like clear four line he was eight minute 38 uh TOM TOI so he did not you know what I mean um I mean you could see where it'd be interesting because they don't have big TV contracts to worry about would the NHL tell the AHL, listen, you can't have fans? Cool. You're going to just play in arenas with no travel. <laughs> Everybody get around these arenas and take over a fourplex. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, that's cheap ice. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much what happening this week. And honestly, it sounds like Bourdain just signed a couple no, it's, of it's, we're, we're at that point where it's like guys like Hoffman and Vatanen and Hammond, they're just going to sit there. Possible at the end, you know, they might. That's what I was saying before. They guys like that might end up not getting a contract until training camp. Yeah, that's another possibility, also. There, um, you know, um, I think the biggest question now is not about this. I think the biggest question is about okay, when we restart, when they start, how many games, what's the conference, uh, what is going to be the, the playoff. So, we have a lot of discussion between the uh, the you know, the the NHL PA and also uh, the NHL. So totally. it's going to be interesting to see what's going on in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, nothing in fun right now. You know, the draft is, was last week. The UFA was over this week. Modded manager looking more for RFA. And then after that, they're looking about, okay, what's we missing? I think a couple of teams are still shopping slowly or properly to find what they are missing on that part. But I think the big news, I'll be honest with you, it was more today about one is maybe one of the best maybe it was the best i uh, never listening uh every time he was on tv and everything is uh, the doc hamrick retired from hockey broadcasting after 47 years uh play by play voice of nhl on nbc covering more i uh, you know 30 37 hundred game including cup final 22 time he's an icon he, he is a pioneer of a broadcasting uh, you know, many young uh, people uh, want to, you know, have a passion about become a play-by-play. -play, like that. He was the, the, the godfather of a play-by-play, -play, I'll be honest with you, and everybody follow him, everybody love him. Uh, you know, he, he was like amazing me. He was 74 years old, and he still, you know, did it this year. So it was pretty amazing to see him. His voice was all around, and he was like unique for, for what he was doing. So for me, listen to him all the time, and came from French Canadian, you know, listening, yeah, you know, the French part where we have a, a couple of René Le Cabellier and then we have Garneau uh, and then, you know, and now you have uh, uh, Pierre Hood, but this doc, Emmerich, was the, maybe one of the best in any other, in any sport as a play-by-play -play, uh, broadcaster. So, uh, you know, thank you for everything he, you, you bring on this for everybody love the game and everything. So it's, uh, you know, um, it's your turn now to relax and rest and enjoy the rest of what you have in front of you. And, you know, thanks for everything. So for me, it's a little bit emotional because I think it was the, really the one enjoy most because it's his passion behind the, the mic. Yeah, I, I, I always enjoyed him. I think when he initially started and the U.S. started getting more broadcasts, I was kind of like, it was different, right? But I think yeah. he really revolutionized um, his approach was different and we had to kind of adjust to it. And it came over time. He like understood that he was like a, a great part of any of those us NBC broadcasts. So it's, I'm kind of surprised he's retired. <laughs> but it, 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 it's funny because he did not come from nowhere where, you know, at the end of the season, like, you know, the last game and the playoff or something like that, we did not hear anything about all oh, the duck, maybe his last game or anything like that. You know what I mean? He, he, it's just like, you know, but I, I'll be honest with you. I was surprised um, to, to have him, like, um, to be 77, 70, 74. I never thought he was so uh, that age. I thought he was maybe. I had 70. no idea. <laughs> I did not know myself, too. You know, he, you know the, the nickname Doc came from Henrik Time at the, uh, the Bowling Great State University where he called hockey from 71 to 73, graduate with a Ph.D., 
So the guy was sm- he's a really smart man. Yeah. And, you know, um, so for me, it's like, uh, you know, since I moved in USA, you always been the guy was, you know, loving to watching more that game, watching and listening more because his voice and the, the way he bring the enthusiasm, the energy, and the, how he was engaged during the game. And, you know, um, his relationship, you know, with El Olchik or Pierre, um, uh, Pierre Maguire, if you turn that, you know, you can see he was like really intense about what he was doing. So, yeah, it was a great to, um, you know, he was a, tr- a national treasure for hockey, I believe, and uh, to see him retire. So, you know, the only I would say, you know, thank you so much because you you bring that kind of passion and behind the mic. And uh, a lot of people, young, more younger at me, uh, they really enjoy hockey, maybe because his his voice behind the mic. So, yeah, don't. It's kind of weird. I don't know if why you just keep keep going, Doc. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. 40, 40 years in the NHL. So, um, so we'll see what's happening there, and let's see what what is next. You know, a little bit what it was. You know, Bob Kostat Kostat, and uh, you know, uh, you know, you can talk about him like a, a Buick and everything like that. The, the best of the best, but. You know, he was one of the best. So we'll see happening. Who's going to be next? And um, and we we're going to get. We have a lot of great uh, over there to pick it up uh, that job and helping. You know, the NBC uh, sport hockey and everything like that. So uh, honestly, we don't have anything else. I don't know, Michael. You have something else around? No, I think or? I think we're at that point where we can start looking at what our team's going to look like next year. It'd be kind of. Interesting because we're running out of daily action. <laughs> we're yeah, getting to that course, quiet yeah, period again. You know what I mean? Of course, you have a couple of things going on around the league and maybe talk that. Um, you know, I have a couple of things for you before we move on with Hannah I'm because we still have a couple, you know what I mean? How many things do you believe an NHL right now never win the Stanley Cup? 26? They never win their Stanley Cup in their history. Like 26, I don't know, 25. No. You know, like some team winning one time, you know what I mean? But how many never win? Won. Arizona's never won. You're right, one. Buffalo's never won. That's two. <laughs> Carolina's won, so that's funny. Um, Chicago's won. St. Louis has won. San Jose's never won. That's three. Um, Dallas won, Edmonton's won, Florida's never won. That's four. H I. LA's won. Las Vegas has never won. That's five. Minnesota's never won. That's six. Uh, Montreal's won. Islanders have won. Rangers have won. And let's see, Nashville's never won. That's seven. Ottawa's never won. At eight. Philly's won. Pittsburgh's won. St. Louis has won. San Jose has won. Toronto's won. Tampa's won. Um, Winnipeg's never won. That's nine. Missing two. Vancouver's never won. (laughs) That's ten. Miss one. Calgary's won. Um, St. Louis doesn't, or Seattle has won, actually. <laughs> um, I'm missing one team. Yep. Um, I'm missing just one name. Let me think about this. I mean, Washington, Carolina, Toronto, Columbus. Yep. Yeah. Columbus was the last one on his plate. <laughs> the eleven team right now, who do you believe have more chance to win? Of all those teams? Yeah. Give me two teams you believe you me have more chance to win. I mean, you know, you gotta think Vegas has an opportunity. I don't yep. really believe in that team, but maybe. Um Columbus, I think, are still a little bit away, but you know, you never know. They they are a good playoff team. Vancouver, to me, had an opportunity, but they lost 
a couple pieces that were kind of concerning, but I think still the core, you know, as long as Demco is what you, you have to think they're going to be a really competitive team. Um, I don't believe in Winnipeg, uh, Minnesota. I definitely don't believe in Arizona. I definitely don't believe, uh, I, think Bay, thing, I don't believe Ottawa. I don't believe <laughs> the only thing really right now, that list on maybe Vegas. And after that, maybe Vancouver, uh, like tomorrow, Vancouver, like, if you know, I think the next three years, if they bring a goalie and they bring like maybe someone or two piece, they have more chance. Winnipeg is anything close, but the rest of this part, but then I don't see Ottawa, Nashville. I, I don't, I don't have any faith in Vancouver and Winnipeg. Vancouver, really, the biggest thing, if they had kept Markstrom, I would have felt a lot better. I would have felt like they were there. Um. And now they've got a gap on the wing, right? Because they didn't keep to Foley. So they have to make a couple moves and they could be back in there. The, you know, I feel they just dropped a year, to be honest. But um, They got Schmidt, but I don't think that does anything for them. I think it gives, it gives them a little bit of a benefit on D. But, you know, I think their issue really boils down to they need a winger and they need a legit goalie. Unless Demko... I, I believe in Demko, but they probably need a second guy. Yeah, old B. If yep. if Holtby can return to a fraction of what his former form is, maybe. And he's got the experience. He's won a cup. So I, I think if he's motivated, he's in shape. Yeah, you're right. If he's like he was last year, I don't think that helps them. <laughs> Now move on to another subject, and you're going to laugh about that one. You remember Joe Thornton just signed um, with the with the Toronto Leafs, honestly, yeah. a couple of days ago. And um, which number is going to wear? Oh, I don't know. Ninety-seven. Really? Yeah. So Joe uh, Spess, uh, you want to give him the nineteen? He refused to get that one. He said Spess should keep it. And number 17. Now, one thing draft year? I'm sorry again. Is that his draft year? Or is he not? No, he was just picked 97 like that. Really? Yep. Um, talking about that, um, I want to mention to you about um, 10 other times the Milk Police had shown a veteran uh, or all of fame during their history, right? And just a couple of things were happening with Joe Thornton. So the one level one, the worst case scenario, the players they raised the sign, it was Doug Gilmore came back for uh, from Montreal at 39, yeah, Clark and... 39 years old. Do you, uh, know, do you know why Joe Thornton's draft year was 1997, by the way? That's why he picked it. Really? Yeah. First overall draft pick, 97. <laughs> so that's maybe the reason why he got that one over there, um, honestly. Uh, so anyway, when, uh, when Gilmore came back with the Toronto, he played four shifts. Then after that, he got destroyed with Dave Lowry, and he never came back on the ice because he blew out his knee. They crashed. It was weird. Like, he blew his knee or something? Yep. Then the following, the le level two, the whipping boy, is the players called Larry Murphy. Well, it was ridiculous. Like, the guy went on to win, like, with Pittsburgh. He was great in Detroit. He, he was boo a lot. Um, yeah, that was nonsense. He just – Larry Murphy was what he was. Like, he was a really good offensive, productive, good defenseman, but not beautiful skater. Like, I don't know what – I don't know what the problem was. He came from Pittsburgh and won the cup, left, won, what, two cups in Detroit? Yep. So, yeah, but he wasn't good enough. He had 61 points, Pierre, for the Leafs in 82 games. Yep. And he was garbage. Oh, okay, right. And then he had 39 points in 69 games, and he finished that season with 45 points. Yeah, so, they threw him up to, to Detroit, and then he got two Stanley Cup. You know who sucked was everybody else. <laughs> yeah, level three, don't remember him, but if you say so, it's uh, Ron Francis and Phil Osley. Um, you know, at right. 30 years old, Phil Osley and Francis, yeah, 41 when he got there. He got 10 points, 12 games, Francis with Toronto. He was only there for... Uh, one, you know, end of the season. So old at that point. You know, Brian Leach had a bit of an impact, but I don't know. Level four, lower expectation, Eric Lindros. 
Eric's head was not right. He like, and I don't mean like emotionally, I mean, physically, the guy was just an injury machine. He just had bad, bad injuries all the time. He and left after that and he it was, was sad because he, he was, when he played, he was like still dominating, but he just couldn't stay healthy. I mean, Who I'm, was, which, which team he finished his career? New York Rangers. Dallas. Did, was he? Oh, he went to yeah. Rangers then Dallas? No, he went to um, Toronto to Dallas. It was before that. It was with Rangers. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yep. The old guy who old is on. And this is the old one, but Pierre Pilat. Uh, Pierre Pilat. It was oh, once he yeah. played one year at the end of his career, like 14 with the Blackhawks. He got trade in six eight, six and nine. Uh, they was expect a lot, and didn't that know one number six solid is, but if not spectacular, Mike Gardner. I never liked Mike Gardner. The guy got 30, 40 useless goals a year to me. He was just really fast and talented, but he was just a weird guy. I don't know what it was. I didn't love that player. They traded Glenn Anderson to get him, which I never – I was like, no, keep Glenn Anderson. And then Glenn Anderson, what he went off and won a cup, didn't he, with the Rangers? Yep. Level seven, here for a good time, not for a long time. Brand Leach. Yeah, well, he played really well, but he was so old at that point. I mean, yeah, but he he did a he good was terrible time. defensively. He was horrible. He did he did well on that um, that run over there. He had no interest in playing. Level either. eight, the impact player, Ed Belford. Well, Ed Belford was great in Toronto. Yep, yeah, two years there it was too old. He had no goalies during those time. He was but so he was good. Finalist the, the Vizna in 2002, 2003. Um, you know what I mean? He did very yeah. well the time. You are absolutely right. He did very well over there. Uh, the hometown hero, Joe Nye Nyewandai. He was phenomenal. They should have kept him. The guy was their best player in the playoffs, and he went to Florida after that, and he was really good there. Like they had him and Gary Roberts, and Nyewandai was their best player. <laughs> like, yeah. It made no sense. They just, I don't know. He was like, that guy. You understood how good he was at that point. Like, cause he wasn't even his best and he was better than everybody. Yep. And number 10, the level yet, this guy is the best in the league. And this is the old one, but, uh, Zhao Plan. Wow. He was a legend, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, that year he would play for Toronto. He got, he played for 40 game. And that, that time, I believe the, the season was 70. It was 70 game or 72 game, I think that season it was not like 82, maybe 68 game, but I think it was 70 game. But anyway, he got he played 40 game at 41 years old. He played an average goal again, 1.89, and he still have the rec he had still have the record of put a save percentage of 0 0.94. 42. <laughs> That's incredible. 9.42. So it's amazing. And who, what's more interesting is. The other goalie that was there. Do you know who the other goalie was? One of the, there was like a couple, but the one was Bernie Perron. Who? Bernie Perron. Yeah, before he got traded to a flat. Right. right. Well, I don't know if they lost him or traded him, but he was claimed in the expansion draft by the Flyers. Yeah. But Bernie Perron played 18 games that year, and then he played 47 the year after. So the Leafs had Bernie Perron. Yeah, he finished his career with the Boston Bruins at 46 years old. He played so, in the WHL, HA at that time, at the end of the his well, so, so think about it. They had Bernie Perron. They protected Jacques Plant and lost Bernie Perron to Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> Good choices. <laughs> it's happened all the time, those mistakes anyway. Yeah. So, uh, you know, talking about Joe, Joe Thornton, the, the, the 10 best old players come back with Toronto Maple Leaf. I was surprised at those times, you know, sometimes I was not remember exactly like, uh, you know, like I was not sure like Gardner was there. I was not sure like Landros was been there. And if you turned out, you know, it's something you forgot those um those names. But, oh, yeah, he played one year with it. Oh, yeah, he played there. So it's true. Yeah. So, Pretty amazing to see that, but uh, you know, your Lindros is there. They had like that was um, John Ferguson Jr. and yep. John Ferguson Jr. First of all, Paul Maurice was the coach, which I didn't really like him that much. But um, he had um, he had Jason Allison, I think, was there. 
and he had Sundin. So their three centers were Lindros, Sundin, and Jason Allison, which was pretty interesting. Uh, Jeff O'Neill was there. Yep. And they had, um, um, yeah, Belfour was there, of course. It was the goalie. So, but yeah, I don't know. He just couldn't stay healthy. It was too bad. I know. It was not like, you know. Oh, Pat, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pat Quinn was the coach. Pat Quinn was the coach. Yep. Yep. So, right. Yeah. And there was a weird war there because between Pat Quinn and Ken Dryden that ended up John Ferguson Jr. being the GM. And, yep. and I yeah. think a year later, he made the Andrew Raycroft. He didn't do well over there. So, um, Listen, we're going to go through the, the, the you know, that we said we're going to go yeah, through. Yeah, let's go through it. And, uh, you know, really you have having uh, more than you're going to take the the charge about this part and go through the team and everything like that. And I'm going to help you a little bit more about what's going on and what, what I sure. can do for you. All right. So we're going to start going through the rosters of the different NHL teams. Today we're just going to take a quick look at the Anaheim Ducks. We'll look at their initial roster, their cap situation, and then talk a little bit about prospects and where we think that they will finish. Um, if we look at their roster, this is kind of what's on the initial roster. So you look at their top line, Jakob Silverberg, Adam Henrique, and Ricard Reichel. And then, you know, you're showing now that Getzlav has dropped down to the second with Danton Heinen, Sonny Milano. And then the third line there kind of – Lining out is Max Jones, Sam Steele, and Troy Terry just re-signed. And I think all three of those players started popping through. And they're projecting that uh, Derek Grant will center the fourth line with uh, Nicholas Delorier and Carter Roney. The player that I don't see on here is Comtois. And you've got to think that Comtois is going to bust through. And I actually had Comtois ahead of Terry, to be honest with you. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, if that last year, right? What's that? Comtois played with them last year? A little bit, yeah, he did. Um, I I think he's a a really really good prospect. To me, like he should pop ahead of Milano. What about Ronnie? Or you know, Heinen? Who's that? Ronnie, Ronnie, the the is it Ronnie? Carter Ronnie, the, right the right wing. This guy? Yeah. He's a meathead. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know him, so my question is like, is it good? Was it? No, he's he's like a tough guy. Like the other guy that's not on here is Isaac Lunderstrom, and I think Lunderstrom. If we can probably update this, so I think Lunderstrom you got to put in there, and then you've probably got to think about where is Comtois. And to me, Comtois is probably the left side. I think he can play either wing personally, but. Um, so they've got some prospects that have come through. A lot of these guys played for the current coach, which is Dallas Eakins, um, in the AHL. Yeah. Uh, and then if you look on defense, like right now, sorry, it's that. there we go. On defense, they have Hampus Lindholm on the left side with Josh Manson on the right. They just signed Kevin Shattenkirk and you have him likely paired with Cam Fowler and then the fourth line is, uh, and I forget, it's Christian Juice and uh, Yanni Hakapana. Both those guys are like, one guy played nine games last year, and the other guy played five. So I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. <laughs> we'll see. They also have um, Brendan Gould, in, and he played 30 games last year, so I would probably put him in there if he's healthy. This is, uh, you saw his brother get drafted. Uh, to Montreal, right? Yeah. And I, I think he's a real good prospect. He's got uh, the only the other guy, I don't know what happened to him, is Larson. Where's Larson? Oh, yeah, the first man. Yeah, so I think I think that this is probably a little different. I think most likely, like, Brendan Gooley should be a top four defenseman at some point if he's healthy. And then let's fix this because this is Colorado. So I think this is probably Stallers. They have a, to me, John Gibson is a top five or ten, probably top eight goalie in the NHL. I really like John Gibson. He had a bit of an off year last year. Ryan Miller was the backup, but I think what you're seeing is their defense is not great, which is weird because on paper it should be okay. I don't know if that coaching situation is the best coaching situation for them. 
they're they play kind of that swarm defense style, which I'm not sure if that's going to work. I think what they want, honestly, is see does this coach fit or do they bring up Kevin Deneen? Because Kevin Deneen is the coach in the San Diego Gulls, which is their AHL team. And in my mind, he's a better coach than what they have up there. But I guess we'll see. Uh, the GM in Anaheim is Bob Murray, and he made an interesting off-season, end-of-season comment, which is, oh, I really didn't communicate with and left the coach out to dry. He publicly came out and said that. <laughs> yeah. Which is really weird. It's a really weird thing to say. <laughs> and I think that the coach is a weird communicator. And if you ever recall, do you remember when we were at the NHL coaching symposium and Andrew Ference and Dallas Eakins had that that part of the symposium? And it was like, I wanted to pull my eyes out. And I'm like, can you imagine this guy talking to players? Like, players are not going to chat with this. Yeah. I've, I've, I watched him when he was in the AHL with Toronto. He totally mishandled Nazem Kadri. He was the coach in Edmonton. And I thought he totally mishandled Neil Yakupov. Like, I just, I don't know. They have they have a lot of young guys that have developed, like Max Jones, Sam Steele, Troy Terry, Comtois, Lundus, and these guys should be NHL regulars. And they, I think that they're going to be. I just don't know if that's going to be the coach. I like the move of bringing in Kevin Shattenkirk. If you look at their cap situation, yeah, they only have one more year. Yeah, all more. They have what? They are over right now. Are they over? Yeah, they have 82.4. In my nose is right here. At uh, 82.4 right now, they have to cut one of those. Um, but I mean, the logical one, I'm really surprised they didn't buy out David Backus. Like, is David Backus going to play in the NHL? Because he's got like a $4.5 million cap. And wasn't he in the AHL at the end of the year? And he looks like he's kind of done. Yeah. But we'll see what happened with that. I think, you know what I mean? Like, overall, they, they are not on the rebuild side. But again, you know what I mean? Like, when you have Fowler at 6.5, you have Lynn Holm at 5.2, then you have Josh Mason, 4.1, Shetan Kirk at 3.9. Uh, you're right now three, uh, four good defensemen, and they are like 28, 26, 29, 31. Then you have 23, you have Larson, Jacob Larson, you just mentioned to him. He's uh, good. He's pretty good. I don't know too much about Curran and uh, Joss, just the Joss. I don't know how Curran got $1 million. Um, I think That's it was. I don't get, but I think Christian Hughes is okay. Um, you know, he can play, but he only played like nine games last year. So I, th I think that what you see in the up here is what is pretty damn good. Right? I don't have any problem with that. I think it's an obvious thing that they're going to have to do something with, with David Backus, and he, he'll he probably get sent down. Or I'm surprised that they didn't buy him out, to be honest with you. It's interesting they signed Andrew Agazzino. I don't know if you know him, but he played at the 1991 age group in Toronto for a long time, and he was a damn good player. And he played with guys like Casey Zizekas. And I was – he's just not a big player, but – He's been a very productive AHL player, and he can play in the NHL. They brought him up, and he skates real well, and he's aggressive. I don't know. And then Sonny Milano, the, you know, he's famous for his like skill and trick shots, but just doesn't translate necessarily. So that they're banking on him, I don't think that works. Like yeah, well, One player you didn't mention, but he's not going to play anymore, I don't think so. It's Ryan Kessler. Um, Gets, Getzlev? Oh, Ryan Kessler's. Yeah, yeah. He's, done. he's finished. So, you know, it's a one he's on a long term injury. Long term injury. So you're not going to get him over there. No, but he's also right now they they have no backup goalie. That's another thing they have to figure out on that one over there. Uh they have four, but not like you know, like is like, Stollers still in there? Who? Anthony Stollers. Uh yes, he's still there. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's capable of being a backup. Like he could play 15, 20 games. So over there they have a uh, Doc Star, Derny, Erickson, and Stollers over there. Um, you know, I think, I think it's gonna be Stollers. Like Stollers had enough games in Philadelphia. He's an ex London Knight. He's six foot four. He's not super mobile, but he's capable of. You know, it depends too. Like if they're 
thinking they're going to finish real low again and try and get high draft picks, which, you know, you got to think that they're trying to figure out how do we move on from Ryan Getzlav? Yeah. Now, and on the prospect side, I think you have something you have to look is about Trevor Zegras. Uh, Trevor Zegras is a real good prospect. You know, so it's a BU. That's another, that's one. The second one they have is Sam Steele. Well, uh, he's an NHLer now. He's real yeah. good. Yeah. So it's he's a, a damn good player in the WHL for Edmonton. Like, he's really smart and he can skate. One you mentioned earlier, I think you have a lot. You have a lot in front of him. He's just to figure out how he can develop. It's really Maxim Contois, a uh, six uh Cindy in the EHL last year. But um <laughs> he's he is big, he can score, and he's mean. And he has better hockey sense than Max Jones, in my opinion. Max Jones, they think, can be like a Tom Wilson, which I don't disagree with. He probably can. He makes a lot of weird mistakes, but he covers up for it because he's so big and strong and can skate. Comtois to me has a lot of potential. Yep. The other guy that's in the system is Braden Tracy. I thought he dropped off a little bit last year. He was a high draft pick after kind of being a late bloomer. I I think that if you here's the weird comparison is I compare him to Jack Quinn that was drafted this year. And Quinn took was a late bloomer that had really good numbers, and then they regress a little bit. So I think that's the risk with Jack Quinn with the Buffalo picked. He reminds me a lot of Braden Tracy. Where Braden Tracy looked like, damn, this guy, where did he come from? He's real good. And he probably got drafted high. And now I think you're seeing that the age is catching up to him because he was an overager. Um, this year's draft was really interesting because I really like their picks. I really like Drysdale. I mean, you can see where he's going to fit in on the top four real in the next couple of years. And then Perot, I think, has a, you know, it's another good forward prospect that can really fit in. Yeah, so they, they, you know, they, they got like uh, their draft this year. It's also Sam Colangelo, Jan Moore, Timo Nicol, then yeah. Antorium Galimov, and then they got, you know, round number six, Arben Southwest, and also Aiden Bowen, number seven round. They have, a, you know, seven pick this year, uh, eight pick this year. Um, on that part, I think they did pretty good to, re to, um, to talk about this, uh, to, to re you know, to, to draft at least. I think one you don't talk too much is J Jacob Perro. Uh, we know already what Jimmy Tristel is going to do. He was the, maybe the top defenseman with Sanderson over there. But I think um, Perro is Colangelo. Could be surprised what he can bring to the – Maybe. Uh, on that part. One, one thing I want to mention to you is the goalie. Um, he's from Liga, uh, Luca Dostal. He's a 6'1", 170, point, uh, 170 pounds. Uh, he's, he's only 19 years old. He's from Finland. Um, and also Benoit Olivier Gros. Uh, from I was going to bring him up, too. Um, you know, what do you think his potential is? I, don't, I haven't really seen him. I saw him in the rookie tournament. He didn't really stand out. The other guy they signed is one of our – is our former uh, captain. Sorry, again. Well, they, they did sign our former captain as well. Yeah, and also you, you should know him, uh, Brendan Tracy. You mentioned earlier, like Victoria playing the double. So I think, you know, overall that team is not banned, honestly. Um, you know, um, it's always been. Yeah, and they signed, they, so they signed Bryce Kindop. That's who I was going to mention, who was our captain last year. Yep. One thing they signed him to a three. Lot, honestly, and maybe you know them very well too. They always been a team with uh, draft very well. They, they like any other team, they you know you make mistake and you you know what I mean that's just part of the game. But I think overall they always draft great defensemen. I agree. For the last fifteen years, you, you can go all the way with Montour. You can see Theodore. You know Van and um, and they, you know what I mean that like you can name a lot over of over and over, right? Yeah, I, honestly, it was pretty good over there. We know what they did when Corey Perry was there. And they have a good run with Jiguer, and you know, I mean, you, you can, you know, when Carl, uh, Randy Carla was the coach for there for many years, it was really, I think, for a couple of years now, the last couple of years, they rebuilt a little bit. We're keeping the captain over there. Um, you know, there will be a, a, an interesting year again. I don't think so. They have the, the full potential to, to, I don't think so to them yet to make the playoff. I think they're still missing a couple of pieces. I think for the sure. forward, I think the forward is not completely, but it's still they have a two good line over there. But overall, I think three, I know, yeah, so they got three pretty good. They do have three pretty good lines. Like I think it if you see Sam Steele and Jones and Comtois play the way they're capable, which 
I mean, they've been really patient with those guys. Maybe, right? Like, I think what they're looking for is, does Zegris become a number one center? Is Drysdale a number one D? I don't think Drysdale becomes a number one, maybe a number two. And then they have a great goalie, right? So then they would have the framework to be competitive again, but I think they're a year away. Yeah, that's surprised, like you said earlier, you know, they did not buy out David Bake Bakey. That doesn't make sense. Um, you know, they bring back uh, Derek Grant. Grant was there. Um, He's on, good. Uh, I think for I really I didn't I didn't like him during the playoff against Montreal. He's a big six five maybe. He's Derek a big Grant. guy with there for the four. I think he for the four. Big? Um, oh, he's big. I'm sure he's six three at least. Look. Are you are you yeah, looking? You're right. He's six three. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, you have a, a good sense of hockey. Also, we have good hands. Uh, but I think it's a good pick for them to get him. Yeah, he had 15 goals last year. Yeah, I know. He he he, he did very well. I'm being, I was impressed when I saw him. I did never pay attention again. Some West Coast is hard for me to follow everybody in yeah. the league. But um, you know, I think at this part now I don't know why they didn't buy David Backies. Uh, but still, they have over they have over limit right now, so they have to figure out uh, to you know to to remove one of the those players. But again, it's not a team going to make the playoff, but they go the right direction. Uh, you know, and Rinky have a good year last season. Uh, Backwell did not play that. I, I don't think so. Backwell have a great year compared to the year prior. Am I right? Backus. Uh, Backwell, yeah. No. Rackle, Rackle, Rackwell. Rackle, no. Rackle was off. Yeah, so that's my point. So, but two, three years ago, we have a good year. Yeah. Um, before he got hurt at some he had, point, he had so. a couple of thirty goal seasons, and but he's kind of been eighteen and fifteen the last. He's still a decent player, but he's way off. He's like half of his old production. They're they're a weird team to me. I don't know. I don't see. Yeah. I think that they're gonna have to figure something out there. I don't know if that's their right coach long term and i don't i think that they don't want to waste john gibson's career like that guy's no i i, I think so good. like get some, get him get him a team that cares because it yeah. feels like they just don't i, I, I think, think you're right about one thing i think you're absolutely right about you know dallas is there for a transition between the next thing the next level and everything like that so i think dallas will be there for one more year it will suffer a little bit but if you look at the pace you put right now on the on the board, you know what I mean? Look the first pick. Yeah, it, it's a lot of good player over there from Gro to Leonard Strom to Z, uh, Zegras. You have three C over there, you know what I mean? And then you have Tristal in the next two, three years. I think Tristal could maybe make the team this year. Depends what they are. Uh, but also Perro maybe lo- a little bit longer. So yeah, uh, a little longer. Yep. So what's happening is another great show. It's fun Thanks, to see uh tomorrow we're going to go with boston if i can recall it oh arizona oh you're right <laughs> and then we'll go to boston i guess on wednesday yeah by the way talk about arizona um is it fisher yeah christian fisher yeah, we're going to sign a contract from two years not officially but the rumor is going to sign a, a year contract two year as a rfa i believe he is so uh um, just want to mention this. I, heard, I read this this morning. So uh, thanks again, Michael. Appreciate it. Have, have a great rest of Monday. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Have a good night. Thank you.